Today, a very interesting gift, the gift of discerning of spirits. Along with words of knowledge, words of wisdom, this gift is one of the three revelation gifts mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 11. A word of knowledge can be anything, but discernment of spirits is more limited in scope, just giving us insight into which invisible spirit is manifesting. This gives us insight into the spiritual world, which cannot be seen with our physical eyes. Spirits, of course, are in three categories. Godly, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Angelic, uh, Seraphim, Cherubim. Those sorts of spirits are godly spirits. Demonic spirits, which are princes, usually in the form of a, uh, like a human form. They sit on thrones and workers which are part human and part animal and they are or they could be entirely animal and then of course human spirits each person created has an eternal human spirit to verify when we're talking about holy spirit we need to verify that to uh, make it confess that jesus christ has come in the flesh 1 john 4 and verse 1. so let's have a look at a couple of visions of of uh, heaven Isaiah saw a vision of God's throne and uh, in the third heaven, and he saw six winged angels called seraphim. You'll find this in Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 3. There were uh, the seraphim with two wings uh, covering his head and two his feet, and two he flew. So I'll leave you to read that because I'm short of time, lots to tell you in this teaching. And then, of course, the Apostle John was praying on the Isle of Patmos, when he saw God's throne also. And uh, there was a door opened in heaven in uh, chapter four, I'm looking at verses one, two, and five. And he saw the, uh, he came under the Holy Spirit's power, saw a throne in heaven and one seated on the throne. And he mentions there the seven blazing torches, which are the seven spirits of God. Now it's not seven Holy Spirits, it's seven aspects of the Holy Spirit. So both the prophet and the apostle uh, discerned what they saw as being godly. Now, as Christians, we become sons of God when we're born into the family of God, and we should be led and guided by the Holy Spirit, Romans 8 and verse 14. So it's one thing to be led by the Spirit, it's another thing to know the discernment of spirits. Not too many Christians are... Uh, uh, know about this gift or operate in this gift. Some Christians will say, well, I've got a gift of discernment. There's no such thing as a gift of discernment. Gifts of discernment of spirits, yes, but people will criticise other people uh, and, and say things about them in critical nature. And uh, they'll say, well, I'm sorry, but I've got a gift of discernment. It, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not on, we should not be speaking about our fellow brothers and sisters like that. Sometimes there are people who uh, you meet and they can tell you your name and uh, your address and even the amount of money in your purse. There's no edification about that and that is sometimes or could be a familiar spirit. Again, check with 1 John 4, 1 because uh, familiar spirits, Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12, they are banned, they're abomination to God. So we don't have anything to do with that sort of thing. Let's go to an example of a discernment of spirits. The Apostle Paul went to Ephesus, his first visit, and a slave girl who was possessed by a spirit of divination uh, followed them around. This is in Acts 16, verses 16 to 18, and Paul got fed up with her. And uh, she kept saying, these are servants of the mighty God and so on, and he, she had a spirit of divination. Paul discerned that, became annoyed with it and worn down and so he cast it out that very moment. So Paul just heard the manifestation of the Spirit, what the Spirit was saying, uh, heard its name from the Holy Spirit, it's a spirit of um, divination, and kicked it out. Now how can that example of Paul help us? If we notice unusual behaviour in those we meet, then we can ask Holy Spirit, what is this? First question. And then we listen, listen to God, and he will give us either the name of a spirit 
or he will ask us to uh, pose a question to the person uh, and it could be something like, well, tell me about your mother or uh, tell me about your family. And from that answer that we get about the family or, or other things that the Holy Spirit might, might give us to ask, we get clues on the type of spirit. And then once we've heard that, got an idea of what the spirit is or who the spirit is, we've then got to discern whether we're confident enough in our godly authority to cast it out. One of the great blessings that I have in life is, is my wife, obviously my wife Veronique. When I was just getting to know her, uh, she told me that she'd seen God on his throne. Well, this was all new to me, and she described seeing his throne, just like Paul saw God's throne in 2 Corinthians 12. And um, when she told me about that, uh, she was... Uh, going to see Father on his throne, and she sat with him on the throne. And instead of, on one occasion when she went, instead of just sitting and talking with Father, the floor, this was in third heaven, the floor of the third heaven opened and she fell through into second heaven. She was in a protective bubble and there were spirits coming and pressing their nose against the bubble, trying to see who this was, you know. Holy Spirit told her on this visit to pay close attention and notice the different evil spirits and the different types of thrones. There were princes like Satan, death and mammon, and worker spirits like infirmity, seduction, etc. She then told me that after that visit, when she sees people, she can see like pigs sitting on their shoulder, or maybe a hen. A pig is uncleanness, and a hen is weakness. Or she might see a clown. Now, a clown is common with the spirit of, in, uh, not infirmity, but with dementia. Dementia is a clown. Don't have any clowns in your house. Don't ever put a red nose on. Okay? That's dementia. It's connected with the spirit of dementia. I asked her how she received the gift, and she told me Father had asked her what gift she wanted, and the discernment of spirits was her choice. Now, if you're ministering deliverance to people, this is an essential gift. Ask the Lord for it and use it to set many people free. A good soldier knows how to use his weapons and has all the weapons he needs at his disposal. So I hope that's helped you quite a bit to study there. Have a look at the notes and uh, put them in action.